Hello, my name is Laura Grammer, and my project is on improving the upstream habitat of White Marsh Run in Baltimore, Maryland to restore the alewife population. White Marsh Run is a stream located in Baltimore County, Maryland. Um, it is also a sub-watershed to the Bird River watershed, which is seen in the picture on the right and it is a main tributary to Bird River. And then Bird River is then a tributary to the Chesapeake Bay. White Marsh Run is actually the largest tributary to Bird River. Uh, the land use in this area is mainly residential and commercial. Um, I chose to focus on um, a reach kind of close to I-95, and about halfway down White Marsh Run, you can see it circled in the picture. Uh, I also adopted this reach, so I'm responsible for doing site surveys and stream cleanups. A little history on this area. Um, it has become very developed over the years. Uh, development actually started. There's a sand and gravel extraction plant. You can actually see it in the picture on the right. It's the building all the way to the in the lower right corner. Um, there was also a mall built, which is called White Marsh Mall. The avenue at White Marsh came later, which is kind of like outdoor stores. And then Nottingham Square around the same time, which you can see in the lower left corner. There's also Nottingham Ridge, which is mainly what the picture is on the right. It's circled um, 83 acres that was cleared for a residential commercial project. It's cleared in 2001, and it still looks the same 15 years later. Nothing was ever done there. Um, they're also currently building outlet stores near Nottingham Square across the street. Um, the site is close to major transportation routes, such as I-95. There's also some other routes um, along the stream. This stream has had some restoration attempts in the past, but these projects have failed. They kind of focused on river form rather than function, and they tried to depend on dominant stabilization offsetting um, a proper design for stream restoration. few current conditions at this site. There's fish barriers, increasing stormwater runoff, channelization, loss of riparian buffer, declining water quality, and this watershed has a low infiltration soil class. I did notice many of these conditions during my site visits. Um, as you can see, the photos to the right, I took them at the site. You can see the top photo, there's erosion, in the bottom photo was of an oil slick on the left, and then there's trash wrapped around the trees as well. Those conditions would definitely lead to lower water quality. When I was doing initial research for this project, I noticed that um, a focus on restoring a specific species and this watershed has not really been done, so I decided to focus on restoring the habitat of the alewife. So I'll give you guys a quick introduction on this species. They're a native uh, anadromous fish, which means they're born in freshwater, they live at sea in the ocean, and then they return to freshwater to spawn. Um, in Maryland, there's been a decline in their population lately, so since 2011, there's been a state moratorium on the harvest of the alewife. These fish are actually an important food source for larger predators, such as the striped bass, salmon, and osprey, which is shown in the picture on the right. Baltimore County also listed white marsh run as impaired for toxic compounds found in fish tissue, so there definitely needs to be some action before the alewife can return to White Marsh Run. So for site objectives, the main focus is to restore the upstream spawning habitat of the alewife. And in order to do this, um, fish barriers need to be removed, the water quality needs to improve, and channelization needs to be fixed and then prevented. 
Um, also, education will be very important um, for community involvement uh, to encourage conservation practices, and this will then lead to long-term success for this stream. Now, with these objectives come some constraints. With community involvement, um, they have to be on board for this type of project. There has to be interest. If it's not there, then it'll be hard to get volunteers and get everyone involved. Um, this also applies to commercial companies. They also have to cooperate and um, be willing to help out. Money, always an issue, um, but we must think about how these projects will be paid for, whether it's through grants or state funding, etc. Um, this site also has a reputation of a history of failed restorations, so that could kind of skew the um, willingness for more projects to occur at this stream, possibly. And also the soil class of this watershed, which is actually sandy clay loam, makes the impervious surfaces in this area even more detrimental because the groundwater already has enough trouble getting into this kind of soil. So to address the first problem that I listed, the fish barriers, um, there's a map on the slide that you can see the little triangles are where all of the fish barriers are in this uh, watershed. You can see there are many. And actually the criteria for this map was developed based on anadromous fish since they are actually weak swimmers, so this can be directly related to the alewife. Um, the factors considered for a fish barrier were high vertical drops, which can be greater than six inches, the water being too shallow, so such as areas in channelized, wide, and spread out sections, or the water was moving too fast, a higher velocity. The image in the upper right corner I actually took at this site that I thought could probably be a potential fish barrier. Um, to the right of the picture, there was this large plywood board in the water that shouldn't be there, and some of the rocks going all the way across, so I thought that could be a potential fish barrier. Um, and then the picture underneath of it shows two 18-inch drops, so that's definitely over six inches. Um, there's a railroad crossing, and then looks like under a road crossing. And alewife prefer water depths of at least 5.9 inches and sluggish water, so you can see how they would not get along well with these types of barriers. The second problem is declining water quality, which can be contributed from pollution from stormwater runoff, most likely connected to carelessness from commercial sites, such as the picture on the bottom um, of an uncovered fueling site at a commercial site, and there's signs of spilling, so obviously when it rains, whatever spilled gets run off into the streams. Um, there is also trash, so at my site I did perform a trash cleanup. I cleaned up 250 pounds of trash in just a quarter mile. Plus there were several larger items which the county is going to have to come pick up, so there were shopping carts, tires, large plastic bins, etc. The picture on the right is what I presume to be oil leached into the water because it had that rainbow kind of glare and then also was tinging the soil kind of a copper color and when I dug my foot into it it was black so this these, um, this pollution definitely contributes to the water quality issues in White Marsh Run. The alewife are sensitive to habitat changes and many of the channels in White Marsh Run are actually in a channel widening phase. So where the banks begin to fail and there's significant erosion. Channelization can actually also lead to a fish barrier if widening is severe and then the reach becomes too shallow. In the pictures on the right, I took them at the site. The one on the top is actually showing a bank failure from a previous restoration. You can see behind the boulder 
of the stabilization, there's significant erosion. And then on the bottom picture, there's just more channel erosion. High amounts of impervious surfaces increase stream flashiness. So these flows can then lead to channelization. According to the USGS gauge that I used for this stream, um, the annual peak flow shows to be increasing on average throughout the years. So this increasing peak flow can also be a barrier for the species because they prefer lower velocity streams. Solutions to these problems would be to remove as many physical barriers as possible for the species. So actually removing the fish barriers, such as the ones with 18 inch drops under the road and railroad crossings, or maybe rearranging the boulders to um, increase the flow of fish migration would be the first step to consider. And then some of the fish barriers, such as um, the shallow, stream, shallow areas due to channelization, um, those would be would fix themselves with other kinds of methods to fix the channelization, to remove that kind of fish barrier. Stricter regulations on the commercial practices and the commercial companies would help reduce the pollution leaching into the water from um, stormwater runoff. So that would then reduce that kind of pollution. Um, Converting abandoned impervious land back to native forest land, so if there's any concrete parking lots not being used that could be um, converted, or just open patches of unplanted land could um, hold tree plantings in those areas. So this leads to community events, so tree planting such as the picture on the right, which was actually done a few weeks ago for Earth Day. It was in a community where they planted in, um, I think it was about an acre of just open grassland. Um, you can also do storm drain stenciling, which is in the picture on the top. So that's kind of a form of education to educate people, hey, don't dump trash or pollutants down this mystery drain. It actually goes to the waterways. Rain gardens and rain barrels are also great resources, especially for communities. Um, and then stream cleanups are another form of community event to help the watershed. So in conclusion, my study focused on restoring a habitat for specific species, which has not been done before in this watershed. Um, the alewife is a protected species and is an important food source, so I thought focusing on them would in turn benefit the entire watershed once their uh, spawning grounds were restored. I think it's important to focus on improvements in the community and within the watershed first before doing active restoration is very important in order to have long-term success especially for the stream since so many stream restorations that have been done on it have failed due to various reasons. So if these objectives are achieved, then the channel should begin to enter a recovery phase so then the future stream restorations to help bank stabiliz stabilization and fixed channelization will be more successful and hopefully lead to the return of the alewife and using White Marsh Run as a spawning ground. And these are my sources and thank you for listening.